I'm Courtney Deegan, and this is The Pricing on the Cake. Welcome to episode five of The Pricing on the Cake, the podcast that's all about growing a profitable business confidently. If you're a female entrepreneur with a newer business, then this is the show for you. Today's episode is part two of a conversation that I had with SEO expert, Avery Melcher. In our recording, we had a really long and awesome conversation about her own business journey, about SEO, and also about pricing. It was so long and full of so many valuable tips that I wanted to split it into two episodes so that you could get as much value as possible out of each of those episodes. So without further ado, let's jump into the second part of my conversation with Avery Melcher. Enjoy. As you mentioned, this is a pricing podcast. I'd love to um, ask you a little bit about pricing now, if that's okay. I'd love love to know, because you came from a corporate background, you came from a background where you had worked with all of these really big agencies. You'd worked with, you know, big CMOs of big companies. For a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs who might not have that background, they can be quite intimidated or uncomfortable thinking about pricing when they come in. How did you tend to think about pricing when you first started versus maybe how you think about it now? What's your journey been like through the past three years? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, when I started, I was very much the typical freelancer or business owner that had no idea what to charge, no idea what to price it at. And I just, I basically would take any job. Like there was no negotiation. There was no strategy. I would spit Mm -hmm. out a number and they would either say yes or counter offer it. And I would accept the counter offer, like Mm -hmm. with no context or really knowing. Yeah. (laughs) I do Mm. per project for everything, kind of getting into the nitty gritty of pricing. As a copywriter, I don't do per word. I don't do um, what I don't do hourly. Basically, hourly, hourly pricing is giving yourself a pay cut every time you get better at your job. Yep. That's all it is. If it takes you three hours to do, like people who are less experienced are getting paid more for yes. a job because it takes them longer to do it than you yep. who has 10 years of experience and have earned that. And in my case, yeah. student loans toward that education. <laughs> and it's- Allie's not gonna cut it. <laughs> right, and if I get paid, if it takes me 15 minutes, and I only get paid for 15 minutes of that. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. So, and if you spend always, 15 minutes creating something for someone and it makes them $10,000, like, you know, $4.50 or even, you know, $300 is such a small part of that. Right. And, and what I do for businesses, it stays on their website. I mean, unless they take it down, um, I've looked back and I have some blog posts and content that I've written and produced for clients that are, is still ranking number one on Google years later. So it's wow. like, you're still getting all of the traffic from that search yeah. result for as long as that's on your website. So it's not like when we leave, I take everything with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. For most, when okay. you're talking strategy and passing something off that business owners are going to implement and use in their business, I think it's really important to make sure you're pricing that at a retainer or a project. Um, What I've done is very unique in the content world. And I basically productized different SEO content services. There are people that do it, but you do still see a lot of copywriters going off of per word or per blog post. And I package SEO strategy, reporting, and actual content writing, as well as putting the content on your website into one retainer and say, here's everything you're getting and here's what it costs. Let me worry about how much each blog post, like how long that takes. Let me worry about how long it's gonna take us to edit that and think through all of that stuff. You as a business owner know exactly what you're getting from me and how much you're gonna pay for it. And like you said, talking about the perception and the value, that's where the value comes. What's been your experience, you know, over the years as you've grown your business, what's been your experience in terms of, you know, raising your prices or changing your prices? Did you ever feel any doubts or fears around that? And what was the response like from your clients? Yes, that's always difficult. So difficult. (laughs) I, I have found that most of my clients have, I have a really good retention rate. 
Um, over the three years of running my agency, I have had three clients leave. Um, two of them, the contract came to an end and another one, they took their SEO services in-house to the company. They hired a full-time position. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually, I don't onboard clients that often. Um, and kind of what happens with a high level service like that. And as I get better is if I onboard one client this year or two clients this year, the next client that comes along, the price is going to be raised. So mm -hmm. almost certainly what someone paid six months ago was less than what you're getting offered now. And it, it's, it's a little bit fluid because a lot of times the contract changes with it as well. Yeah. I've learned a little bit more. I'm including a bit more value. Yeah. Um, but then if I decide that I want to continue on with that client, that's when I do have a conversation with them. Do I value the relationship? Do I want to keep them where they're at? They're happy. Um, do I want to bump them up and say, I think that we'll really be moving toward this. And, and uh, you know, if this sounds good to you, like this is what the new price will be moving forward. We're going to continue everything else as usual. The stats and everything is looking great. Um, but I just think we're going to get better results and be kind of where the new industry standard is moving toward. And I don't think I've had anyone say no to that yet. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, that's awesome. Sometimes it is just time to do some spring cleaning, you mm -hmm. know, uh, where you're just realizing that. And I kind of use that as a thermometer as well. Like when I'm realizing I'm working with clients that even if they're great people, I'm just like, Oh, this is not the relationship I want. Or yeah. they're really hands-on. Um, I find, I try to find a graceful way to bring that contract to an end, or I do hit them with the price increase and they might say no. And it's like, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. You know? so it's, it's a little, little bit of managing all of that, doing it well, doing it professionally, right? Like no hard feelings. Um, but again, that's, I didn't quit my job to work with people I don't want to work with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can do that all day long in an agency. So. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think that I, I wish that more small business owners and entrepreneurs thought about that and thought about it that way, as in they didn't quit their jobs to work with people they, they didn't like. I think a lot of people find that they're kind of trapped and challenged by that mindset of if I don't take this job, I, you know, I'm not going to get income. I'm not going to be able to keep my business and things like that. But there is still a big cost to saying yes to projects or people that we really shouldn't say yes to. And so it is really, really important to be aware of. I love that you mentioned that you, you know, if you're working with someone who perhaps you shouldn't be working with or don't want to work with anymore and you give them a price increase. I think that using pricing to manage a customer relationship is, is really interesting and it's fair at the end of the day. A price needs to reflect the value that you're giving them and the work that you're contributing to them as well and the value that you're going to give them. And so, yeah. you know, if it's, if it's a relationship that's taking a lot more from you and the price doesn't feel fair, then a price increase is absolutely the right thing to do. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I was going to just agree with you. I think in what I do and a lot of business owners that I talk to, I mean, there's, there are the unfortunate moments where you just end up working with someone that you're like, this person is not my person. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to get out of that. Um, and I've stuck around in situations like that longer than I should have, because like you said too, at the end of the day, you do need to pay your bills. <laughs> so yeah. when you're starting yeah. out, you may have a little less choice, but you do still have some choice. Yeah. Um, and you have to think about like, if you, if someone's showing you the red signs or the red flags, in a discovery call or something, you have to think about if this person is going to be taking up all of my time, will I have time to go out and look for my new client? And that's something that took me years to finesse mm -hmm. and understand what those red flags are. Yeah. Um, and I actually <clears throat> specifically wrote most of those things into a contract. And now one of the biggest red flags I have now is if someone questions my contract that I send over and people do all the time, um, I just say, you know what? It's my contract. I hired a lawyer. Everything in there is in there for a reason. Um, if you're complaining about a $20 late fee before we've even started the engagement, yeah, you're wow. me that you don't intend to pay on time before we're even starting. Yeah. <laughs> <don't> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the types of things that they complain about. And I'm like, why? 
why are you complaining? Like, and it's, it's like, mm. I have a $20 late fee, which is very nominal. Um, yeah. And very standard. Like you pay that on your cell phone. If you don't pay your bill, yeah. you pay more exactly. than utilities. They shut off your utilities if you don't pay yeah. them. And so as a service provider, I'm like, what makes you think that, again, I want to do my job for free <laughs> because you yeah. don't want to pay your bills on time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh gosh. I could, I feel like I could talk to you for hours about this, uh, <laughs> Avery. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, but we're just about a time, but I did want to ask you, what's the biggest lesson in pricing that you've learned as a business owner so far? Oh, I have to think about that. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I feel like there's just so much, there's so much out there you could, you know, listen to, you know, I've, I've read all these tricky negotiation tactics about like, let the other person lead, um, you know, like. I've heard other sales tactics of like talk up your offer and make it sound so great and then say, and it's only, and honestly, at the end of the day, what works for me and you just have to be true to also how you are. And for me, I'm just, I'm a straight shooter. Um, when I'm on a sales call, I want to to hear what I'm getting, what they're delivering and what it costs. I don't need a fluffy sales pitch. Someone told me very early in my career is the easiest way to make more money is to provide more value to people. So if you're struggling to raise your prices or figuring out what to do, or you've been raising your prices and you haven't been adding value to your packages and your customers, you need to start rethinking what you're doing. Awesome. Oh, thank you so much for that, Avery. I, I love the fact that you mentioned value in there. <laughs> so thank you. As a, as a pricing expert, that makes me very, very happy. Oh, thank you so much for coming on to the show, Avery. If people want to get in contact with you, how can they do that? My website is just my name, averymelcher.com. Um, all of my services are there. And again, very transparent. My pricing is all on my website, included with all the deliverables that you'll get within each package. And um, I'm also Avery Melcher on Instagram and TikTok. Fantastic. Thanks again, Avery. And for everybody at home yep. listening or watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a review. If you'd love to get in contact with Avery, please do. And I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.